Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is a discussion with Dr. Adarsh Bhimraj, who is an infectious diseases specialist at the Cleveland Clinic Foundation in Cleveland, Ohio, in the United States. Uh, the purpose of this discussion is to look at various treatment options available for COVID-19. Uh, I'd like to point out again that our goal is to shed light on the information that is available to us here in the U.S. Uh, we are not making specific treatment recommendations for any given patient. That's up to their treating physicians wherever in the world they are. Remdesivir, a drug that, uh, uh, you know, uh, an American company made it. it. It was one of the earlier drugs that came to the market for COVID-19 uh, in tw mid-2020. Uh, it's getting a lot of press in India because we've heard about the drug going on the black market. People are uh, paying extraordinarily large sums of money to get access to this drug. Uh, and it's created this entire, uh, you know, situation where I, I get the feeling that some people may be under the impression that this is a life-saving drug, that it changes the course of the disease, that it can save the life of their loved one. Again, Madhu, like you said, I think there's so much panic and there's so much misinformation. I think uh, one of the drugs that I want to really talk about is Remdesivir. I'm glad you brought it up. So, and Base Pascal was an English physicist who said, never speak more clearly than the facts allow. I'm going to think never think more clearly than the facts allow. Right. So the data that we have that is published or in preprints about remdesivir, again, shows that remdesivir, when used in patients who are admitted to the hospital, can get people a couple of days out of the hospital. I think that's what the study shows. It does not show any mortality benefit. What do you mean? It doesn't save lives, at least in all the studies they have looked at. And there was an earlier American study that was well done, which was called as Act 1, uh, which didn't show any benefit in saving lives, but it did say it's going to get people out of a hospital. Uh, there's a huge study the World Health Organization did. It's called a Solidarity Study. There, it did not uh, save lives. It also did not prevent people who are sick from going on ventilators or breathing machines. So the question either as a physician or as a patient, you have to ask yourself is, in most countries, that's an expensive drug that can be only given through an IV line. There's no pill form for this. Again, when you have something like dexamethasone or steroids, which are pennies, which, is, which can save lives compared to that, this is a drug which doesn't really save lives, maybe gets you out of the hospital a few days. And to use it or not use it is a value judgment. But uh, like I said, there's moderate benefit, modest benefit in maybe symptom recovery or getting out of the hospital, but no significant benefit in terms of deaths or people going on ventilators. Based on what you've said, what I'm taking away is that if I have a loved one in the hospital somewhere in the world, right now we're talking about India, and they cannot get access to remdesivir uh, because it's not available, I should not feel bad that that's the reason why they may die. Uh, it's not a life-saving drug. That's not what the data is showing us. Would, is that a fair statement to make? Yeah. Madhu, yes. Again, for me, I wish there were other studies or other design studies. But again, with the existing data, I think that is the conclusion we all should be reaching. Unfortunately, the way these studies were done, uh, it's hard to kind of uh, tease out all the specific details. And uh, with caveats, my way of interpretation is if you're not really that sick, uh, just requiring a little oxygen and you're not going to progress into mechanical ventilation or death, I think remdesivir might get you out a little earlier. Okay. Yeah. And this is a key piece that our viewers should keep in mind that here we have a drug like dexamethasone. It sells for a few rupees in India. And then you have a drug like remdesivir, which sells for thousands of rupees. And currently it may be a well, uh, well, uh, uh, much larger number. So I think it's good to keep this perspective.